come get set up. All right, so this is the topic for tonight. Uh, we have talked about everything from false gods in the, uh, in the scriptures, people like Molech and Chemosh and Ashtaroth. Baal, um, and uh, we talked. Uh, what are some? We talked about how people got saved in the Old Testament. Talked about numerous things over the last few months. Why do we have church on Sunday? That's a good one. All right, thank you. And uh, but tonight is a little bit of a different twist because we're going to look at what does the Bible say about cremation. Okay, and um, with all of that being said, I know that God can resurrect anybody, all right? And so it has nothing to do with whether or not anybody's going to heaven or not. But what is the Bible reason? What, what does the Bible say uh, on how we should uh, handle um, the, the last effects of our body and our being upon this earth there ought to be a bible reason we do everything that we do that's right <laughs> all right we got the two preachers to I'll say amen tonight side. all right and uh, but uh, you come and uh, go ahead and preach to us here tonight all right let's go to second timothy all right second timothy we're going to start this off we all got to get on the same page here all right y'all didn't seem to all agree just a second ago, so we need to start off on the same page. Second Timothy chapter 3. I just want to start off here on the right foot. Okay, Second Timothy chapter 3. When you get there, we're going to read verse number 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, unto all good works all right let's talk we're going to talk about creation uh, cremation i knew i was going to do that i knew it was going to happen our first uh thing we're going to look at is in genesis chapter number 15 genesis 15 we want to look and see here we're going to start off what did the old testament saints practice what did they practice all right genesis 15 let's look at verse number 15 we're going to go to a lot of verses all right so be prepared for that Genesis 15, verse 15. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. This is Abraham. Abraham was buried. God told him, he said, I want you to be married at a good old age. Let's look to chapter 25. Chapter 25, verse number 8. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age. And an old man, uh, an old man, and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar the Hittite, which is before Mamre. The interesting thing here is he was instructed by God to be buried. All right, he was instructed by God to be buried. Uh, let's go to chapter thirty-five. Chapter 35, that was Abraham. Chapter 35, Genesis, verse number 29. We see here, and Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people, being an old and full of uh, days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. All right, let's go back a few verses. Same chapter, verse number 19. Verse number 19, and Rachel died and was buried in the way of Ephrath, uh, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave. Unto this day we see the first tombstone mentioned in the Bible. So there is a grave. She was buried. Abraham was buried. Isaac was buried. Isaac's wife was buried. Let's look on here. Let's go to chapter 49. Chapter 49. Genesis 49. And verse number 33. We're going to begin reading. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, it sounds like a good father, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Read on chapter 50. And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept uh, upon him and kissed him. Let's look down, uh, believe, to verse number 8, I think. And all the house of Joseph and his brethren, and his father's house, only their little ones and uh, their flocks and their herds. Uh, I can re I find it back in here. I have it listed throughout. What was that? 
Verse 5, And my father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die in my grave, which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan. Thou shalt, uh, there shalt thou bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. So we see Abraham was buried, Isaac was buried, and Jacob was buried. All right? The forefathers of the Old Testament were all buried, all right? So that's the Old Testament saints. Let's go on. Let's look and see what the New Testament saints have for us. So what kind of a example did they leave, all right? That's what we're looking for is examples. I haven't been able to find a verse that says, Thou shalt not. I haven't been able to find that verse yet, all right? So when we find those things, we go and we look for examples that were left for us and for principles, okay? So we saw what happened in the Old Testament. Let's look in here. John chapter 11, verse number 17. All right, verse number 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. This is Lazarus. Lazarus was laid in a tomb, was buried, all right? Laying in the grave. Let's read on down to verse number 38 real quick. Stop here at verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laying upon it. Let's go down to verse number uh, 43. And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto uh, them, Loose him and let him go. The interesting thing here about this story of death was that Jesus called forth a man from the grave. All right, We're just taking the principle for where it is. He called forth a man from the grave. He didn't call for ashes. All right. This is, this is just the thought process, and we're going to hit some of this later on, okay? I want you all to understand. The thought process of cremation, it started out as punishment. Yes. It was a form of disrespect when uh, an army would come in and would ravage a city or would plunder or whatever. They would burn the bodies right. to not be recognized, to, to be uh, un unattainable, you know, there would be no comfort found that your loved one may have made it. It was just to desolate and to, to, uh, to, to pull apart, to take away. And the thought process is, is that even God himself cannot find it. All right, that's what the thought process is. When God called forth Lazarus, he was able to, and, and God, as, as the preacher said earlier, God can raise anyone from the dead. Surely he can. But the thought process here is Lazarus was buried called forth a man out of the grave, all right? Let's go on, let's move on into, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 14, Matthew 14. Let's look here, we saw Lazarus, Matthew 14, verse number 12. And his disciples came and took up the body, this is John the Baptist, and buried it and went and told Jesus. John the Baptist was buried, Lazarus was buried, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, their wives, they were buried. We see Lazarus was buried. John the Baptist, one of the greatest to walk the earth that was not God, was buried. Let's look on. Let's go to John chapter 19. All right, John 19. The greatest example left for us. John 19, verse number 40. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen cloths with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a, a garden and in the garden a new sepulcher wherein was never man yet laid. There they laid Jesus, therefore, because the Jews preparation day for the sepulcher was night at hand. Jesus was buried. Yes. As Christians, we strive to be Christ like. Right? In all, things. In all things. So just some things to think about. All right? Some things to think about. We see here the great forefathers of the Old Testament were buried. Some of the greatest men of the New Testament we see here. And Jesus himself was buried. All right. 
So we see what the Old Testament saints and the example they left and the New Testament saints and the examples that they left. Let's move on. Let's go to some different thoughts here, okay? Different thoughts for us to consider about cremation. Let's go to John chapter 12 since we're in the book. Chapter 12. Chapter number 12. And let's read verse number 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Nature itself teaches us to bury. Many things bury. Uh, uh, throughout a lot of uh, the, the animal kingdom, they will bury uh, mates, especially the ones that mate for life. They will bury one another and cover up or hide. But then also we see um, throughout a lot of the agricultural world, we have to bury in order to produce fruit. Amen. All right. So there's a burial. There is uh, the fruit here. Uh, making sure I'm not missing anything out of here. I'm not missing anything. Okay, so we'll move on to number two. So we see nature itself teaching. Let's go on to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to talk to you about stewardship. The stewardship. What is expected of us and what is given to us. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse number 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, so we see the difference here. There is a distinct of, a, of something, this temple, and then the indwelling of God. Okay, so I think a lot of times we get confused of what is spiritual and what is physical. They are both represented right here. There is a physical and there is a spiritual. All right, let's look on, uh, continue reading. Uh, lost my place here. Uh, 1617, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall... God destroy for the temple of God is holy. This is the physical. Which temple ye are? All right. Uh, let's look at chapter number six. Chapter six, verse 18. He, is, he has made it very clear. This is a very special thing. This is a holy uh, thing. This is something special given to us. This temple is... It, to refer to it as a temple has shown the importance of what he's trying to transfer to us. Chapter 6, verse 18. Uh, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. For he that committeth the fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye uh, have of God, and ye are uh, not your own. We are shown here the importance of representing it to the temple, the holiest place. Uh, as the children of Israel moved through the desert, the temple was the only building they took with them. It held all the riches. It held the most uh, beautiful things. And it was the place that God chose to indwell. It was a very important thing. The Bible has shown us here how important. And it is defined both physical and the spiritual in this sense. And the temple is representing the physical so we have to consider the things that God has given us. Those things that, are, uh, that we're talking about to be as important, we would not throw away. All right? God is, he has given you this thing. He has, he has asked you to take care of it. We use this verse to talk about tattoos. We use this verse to talk about drugs and alcohol and rough living. We use this verse. Why couldn't we use it for this intent as well? This because the soul is not present doesn't mean the temple is not to be taken care of still. All right. Verse number 20. I knew I was missing something. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In all things that we do, we should glorify and strive to bring glory to God in all things with your body. All right. Let's move on. Okay, uh, with the same thought process, let's go to Leviticus, 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 Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, chapter number 19, okay, chapter 19, go to verse number 28 when you get there, 
along the same thought process. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. He has given us this same, not to harm the body. Okay, not to bring harm to the body. Yes, he's talking about a living person and to inflict the pain, but the, 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 the verses that we read back in uh, um, 1 Corinthians, it was very clear. We take care of this temple of God, all right? 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 5. Not harming the body. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, wholly, completely. Uh, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and your soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're building up to something here, okay? Let's read that again, though. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? So stewardship and not harming ourselves. Sanctified. Let's move on. Let's go to, oh, it's time for the big one. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter number 6, we're going to read verse number 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized in his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we... Also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall... Did y'all read that? Let's go back. I think we need to hit that again. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death... How did Christ die? He was buried in the tomb. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. That's right. That's a powerful verse right there. I feel like we need to read that again. One more time. Let's go back to verse number 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. The baptism. Picture the baptism here. We see, we've, we've all been in here when we've done it with the, the bus kids, the different salvations that we've had here in the last couple of weeks. We go up there buried in his likeness and raised to walk the newness of life. The representation, the representation of Christ's death, and then in the representation of his resurrection. This is the same picture that is being left when, for us as we are buried. In this verse, it says, in the likeness of his death, we're going to be buried. And then in the likeness of his resurrection, we will rise up from the grave. Amen. When he calls us home. Yes, God can bring anything back. God can, God can do anything, yes. We're going to take the Bible for what it's saying. And after some of the verses that we read, I don't know how you could take it any different. Right. we got to take it for what it's saying and the, the example that's being led. Uh, we had somebody uh, this past Sunday night, I can't remember who it was, asked a question. They said, well, what about the people that have died in, in fires? That's, that's up to God. How you die, that's... We have no control over that. That was God's plan. That was God's will. That was intended in a heavenly manner. Okay? But what we choose to do, the choices that we make within ourselves, take things to a whole nother level. All right? And when I was in college, um, we, we did something bad. We got a demerit. When I was in school, when we taught in the school, we would hand out demerits for those who did something wrong. Because the choice that was made to go against the rule. Because of the decision that was made, we all have a repercussion. Because of the, the, the choice that we have decided to go with, there is a price for every action. There is an equal or opposite reaction. Amen. Okay, 
We take these principles, we take these truths, we take for the, the Bible for what it is given. And I think all these verses have lined up very well with what is expected of us. Right. We talked, uh, let's, let's go, let's hit some of this other stuff real quick. Let's go to Numbers chapter 11, okay? Numbers chapter 11. I want to show you the, this act of burning and this act of turning into ash. It was never a good thing. Numbers 11, verse number 1. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Not, not a good thing. Not a good thing. Let's go to Amos. Amos, chapter number 2. Okay, say, so Brother Hanks, things have changed. We're going to hit that. Amos 2. Amos 2, verse number 1. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because... The Lord, thus saith the Lord, there's a transgression that was made, and he's not going to re he's not going to take back the punishment because he burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime. Amen. Right. Never a good thing. Right. It was a disgrace. It was a disrespect. God said he's going to punish because, That's right. because they burned the bones. Right. All right. I'm just going to give you a couple statistics if I can keep them all straight in my head. Eight years ago, eight years ago, it was 50-50 in deaths in America were cremations. 50-50, 50% of the deaths in America were handled in cremation and then the other in burial. Three years ago, it was 56%. The states in which are doing most of the cremations, I want you all to think about this. It's Washington State, Nevada, California, Colorado, New York, New Jersey. Okay. Let me, show you, let me tell you the states that are burying mostly. Georgia. Alabama, North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, the Bible Belt. Right. Right. Let, let that thought sink in just for a second, okay? Um, let me think. There was a, I had another statistic here. I, I got to share it. I'm gonna, otherwise, I'm going to beat myself up tonight. Um, the, oh, uh, it is referred to as Christian burial, and it has been for thousands of years in AD um, uh, 8300 the Romans who were going about on their Roman Empire the, the the rampage that they had gone through the the conquering of the of the new world the Romans had gone out and they had conquered all these heathen lands and all these uh, the, the whole known world they had gone out they had started uh, accepting the customs of cremation in the heathen countries India and, and uh, uh, Burma and a, a lot of the, the Middle East or the, the eastern side of that, that side right there, all Buddhist and all Hindu have practiced cremation for thousands of years, given the body back into nature. And the Romans started practicing it, and it became a fancy way of uh, handling after death for the Caesars. And it became uh, kind of somewhat accepted in that culture. In AD 500, when Christianity took off, it became extinct. And within the last couple hundred years, we have not practiced it hardly at all. In the Western civilization. The Buddhists, the Hindu, many cults today are practicing uh, the cremation, and this is where it's coming from, back out of that culture. Okay? You're saying, Brother Hanks, uh, you know, uh, money, economics, and, uh, you know, it's cheaper. Y 
th- there are other ways. Right. Okay. They're going to try to get every dollar they can out of you. All right. They, I know that. There are other ways. And you can get counsel in those things. I'm not a counselor in those things. Okay. <laughs> but I know... Uh, just, just to say it, I know doing a 24-hour burial is cheaper, and you would do a later service. And, and if you're going to do a cremation, I'm just, I'm just going to just mention these things, okay? This is not Bible. This is Kyle. If you're going to do a cremation, the, the, the urn will be there. You're, you're not there. So if you did a 24-hour burial and you just did a remembrance service, that's, that's my thinking on that. But out of the Bible, what we've read the examples that were left, the, the principles that were there, the verses that we read that in, in likeness, I think need to be considered in the life and the options of the Christian. All right? And everything that we do, we need to try to give glory to God. Okay? The, the verse uh, that we read about Rachel and how she was buried, and there was a tombstone. Uh, I heard, I heard a, 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 there was a debate I watched about this, and uh, it was a, between a pastor and a university man. And uh, he was saying, you know, even it, when, when you bury, we, we leave up a tombstone. And we, a lot of us, we take great consideration of what's going to be written on, on that tombstone. And I, I think we should, for we should, because that is your life's representation of what the world is going to see from that day forth. Is what's going to be written on there, okay? How about leaving the Bible verse? How about trying to extend that testimony out? Can, can, you, can you do that the other way? Think, think about just that thought. What your life can carry on from that day forward until the foreseeable future of that stone's existence. The testimony that you can leave. That's what I have. Those are my thoughts. That was the the Bible that was there. So, preacher, I'm going to hand it over to you. All right. Thank you. And by the way, those are Bible principles. Let me. And I believe that. At, that